Well, we find ourselves this evening looking both backwards and forwards. Uh, You might already know that the month of January is named after the Roman god of beginnings, Janus. And Janus apparently had two faces, one for looking into the past and one for looking forward into the future, hence his association with the start of a year. It's often a time, isn't it, when you're both looking backwards and forwards. And yes, I know we're in October. January's a while away. But there's a bit of a January feel to this evening, in more ways than one. A bit of a January feel in that we look both backwards and forwards. We want to reflect back upon this morning's covenant renewal meal, the Lord's Supper. And at the same time, we want to look forwards to our covenant renewal service, God willing, next Lord's Day morning. As we do so, we come to the fifth of six studies in this subject of covenant renewal. A formal, public, collective, united recommitment to Jesus Christ All of our studies so far available online if you've missed them and and want to catch up. So far we've thought of an introduction to covenant renewal. And then we've looked at covenant renewal in Moses' day, in Joshua's day, in Asa's day. And now we come to covenant renewal in Joash's day. The key verse this evening is 2 Chronicles 23, verse 16. Jehoiada, the high priest, made a covenant between himself and all the people and the king that they should be the Lord's people. And perhaps a word about the context here. Uh, as we turn back to 2 Chronicles, we're, we're in the period of the kings of Judah. These events are taking place around 1000 BC. This morning, uh, we reminded ourselves and we we thought of how these kings come one after the other. And four times in this period, uh, we have recorded that the kings led the people of God in a covenant renewal ceremony. This morning, we saw how King Asa led the way. Uh, Some 500 years after Joshua's covenant renewal, uh, Asa, uh, having been convicted by the word of God, no doubt, leads the people in renewing covenant commitments. And it was a time of great rejoicing, great celebration. Uh, We we left uh, 2 Chronicles this morning with a period of rest upon the land. But King Asa has died Forty years have passed since his reign. Uh, Three kings have sat on the throne in that interim period. First, there was King Jehoshaphat. He was another good king after Asa. But he was followed up by two bad kings. I do appreciate it's difficult to keep track of names and dates. We're maybe okay with David And then his son Solomon. And then when you have the division of the 12 tribes. For most of us it becomes a a jumble of names I would reckon. And it's no surprise I mentioned earlier. In total there were 38 kings who ruled over the divided kingdoms. 38 kings and one queen. One queen. And as we land in 2 Chronicles 22 and 23 this evening, we're entering into the reign of this queen. Her name is Queen Athalia. And she's the fourth to sit on the throne since this morning's King Asa. And like the two monarchs before her, she did not rule well. By the end of the chapter, by the end of chapter 23, there's a new king on the throne. And the people have renewed their covenant with the Lord. Uh, A fresh start has been made in Judah. 
They've turned over a new leaf by the end of the chapter. A new chapter has begun, you could say, in their history. And perhaps for you and for me, our covenant renewal next Lord's Day will be something a little bit similar. Something of a new beginning for you. Uh, Something of a new start, a fresh start. That would be a good thing to pray for. That by God's grace, the 16th of October, 2022, will be for you a line in the sand where you leave behind sinful practices, sinful habits that you don't intend to return to. And you press on in your service to Christ. I mentioned earlier about our publication on the history of the congregation. We pray that isn't the end of the story, don't we? We pray that it's just the beginning. That it would, we pray, don't we, that this covenant renewal of ours, that it would really mark the beginning of a new chapter for us as a congregation. And that even for our denomination as a whole, That this covenant renewal as it's observed in congregation after congregation. That it would mark a pivotal, seminal, critical moment in our denomination's history. What a blessed thing that would be. That's certainly the emphasis we find here. When it comes to covenant renewal in Joash's day. Three things. For us to notice about covenant renewal this evening. I I really hope I'm able to communicate uh, the sense of this story to you effectively. This is a gripping tale. It's a sort of thing that movies could be made of. Uh, And I hope you're able to get the sense of what's happening. Firstly, it's a time for recognizing God's faithfulness. It's a time for recognizing God's faithfulness. Really, this is chapter 22, verses 10 to 12. It's at this stage in chapter 22, we find the solitary queen in the list of all kings and queens. Here we have the the only queen in the list uh, taking the throne, Athalia. And it was literally a case of her Taking the throne. 22 verse 10 describes how when she saw her son had died, she arose and destroyed all the royal family of the house of Judah. Those words really should unsettle us when we read them. This wicked woman, she was the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. She furiously set herself to exterminate and wipe out the royal line of David. We have to understand what a wicked thing that is. Uh, This would have involved murdering her own grandchildren. That was how wicked it was. Uh, And we've got to see that behind this woman, Satan. Satan is the master puppeteer. If we stand back a little from these events in Second Chronicles, uh, we should try and bear in mind ever since the fall in the Garden of Eden, there, there has been this almighty conflict between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, between Satan's offspring and Eve's offspring. The Lord said there would be this enmity, hostility, warfare. And we've got to understand that constantly in the background of scripture uh, there is this undercurrent uh, this theme music if you like where Satan is trying to destroy the coming serpent crusher he's trying to wipe out the royal messianic line And we don't have time to trace some of those events. Maybe we will sometime. But that's certainly what's going on here. Athalia is not just a crazed, psychotic, paranoid woman. But the serpent is behind her. Frantically trying to destroy the serpent crusher. uh, Before the serpent crusher could ever be born. 
trying to wipe out the royal line of David. And verse 10 tells us that she was successful, that she destroyed all the royal family of the house of Judah. At least she thought she did. She thought she did. Because verse 11 tells us about a very brave woman, Jehoshabeath. Uh, more children should be named after her. Jehoshabeath, uh, the wife of the priest, Jehoiada. And at great risk, she took a little baby, Prince Joash. And she protected him. For six years, they kept him hidden in the house of God. That was probably the one place Queen Athalia wouldn't ever have darkened the door. The house of God. And unbeknown to the wicked queen, there's a living descendant of David's royal line. And we've got to see God is behind all of this, isn't he? God, uh, God is here. He, he's ensuring his covenant promise being kept and fulfilled. He had promised to David that there would always be a descendant. His, his royal line would continue forever. And God is faithfully seeing to it that the line of David continues on. We do well to stand back and admire God's faithfulness. To praise his faithfulness. And still today, he's the ever faithful God. Even when we're faithless, he is faithful. Even when it doesn't always seem like it. I mean, just think to all appearances, it didn't seem as if there was a descendant of David. Little Prince Joash was kept a closely guarded secret. He wasn't known to Athalia. And, and, and surely to keep the secret, he wouldn't have been known to pretty much everyone else. But he was there. The whole time, the true king behind the scenes and wicked Queen Athalia doesn't have a clue. We can think in a similar way. There's a king today. Greater than Joash. A king who rules and reigns over all. Jesus Christ. And the rulers of this age, they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. The people around about you, they don't know anything about him. But you do. You do. He may well be a secret as far as they're concerned. But not to you. As Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5 verse Seven, we walk by faith, not by sight. This sort of thing puts strength into your soul. Knowing that while wickedness and unrighteousness abounds, we have another king. We have another king. The king of kings. So take heart, friends, our king reigns. And covenant renewal is a time for recognizing God's faithfulness, even when it's behind the scenes. A time for recognizing God's faithfulness. Secondly, it's a time for removing sinful influences. A time for removing sinful influences. We had a very significant week in our family this past week. Toby turned seven. And we are so thankful to God for seven years of Toby. We had a party with balloons, presents, party bags. As we enter Second Chronicles, we find another child turning seven. Prince Joash. But Prince Joash doesn't get a party. There's no balloons for seven-year-old Joash. No presents, no party bags. Rather, boys and girls, he's given a crown. He's given a crown. Joash is only seven years old when he becomes king. Uh, chapter 23, 1 to 11, describes how Jehoiada, he's the priest, uh, and remember, it was his wife, 
his wife who bravely hid Prince Joash. A Jehoiada takes courage, verse 1, and he strengthens himself in the Lord, and he begins the process to crown little Prince Joash. But he can't do it himself, so he forms an alliance with some of the commanders of Judah, some of the Levites, some of the priests. Uh, So serious is the whole operation. He enters into oath-bound promises with them. He covenants with them. Verse 1, entered into a covenant with the commanders. Verse 3, all the assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God. Verse 3, they said, Behold the king's son, let him reign, as the Lord spoke concerning the sons of David. You would love to know the reaction of some of those Levites and priests. No doubt they didn't know anything about Joash being the future king. Can you imagine the surprise on their faces? And plans then begin for the coronation of Joash. The whole thing cloaked in secrecy. Uh, You have people keeping watch. You have armed guards. This is Operation Joash. Look at verse 10. Jehoiada set all the people as a guard for the king. Every man with his weapon in his hand. So at the ready. From the south side of the house to the north side of the house. Around the altar and the house. And they have the coronation. Seven year old Joash is crowned king. Verse 11. They put the crown on him. They gave him the testimony. That is the scriptures. Uh, And by the way, some of what happens in coronations today, some of these things are traced back to verses like these. A Bible given to the king. uh, Just like a Bible was given to the queen at her coronation. Uh, So they gave him the testimony. Uh, They proclaimed him king. And Jehoiada and his sons anointed him. And they said, long Live the king. So much drama in this, isn't there? And we can just imagine the noise bubbling up. It was probably very quiet until they started chanting, Long live the king. And wicked Queen Athalia, she hears, she hears the noise. She's outraged. And she is promptly put to death. And Jehoiada, the priest, he leads the young king and he leads them and the people in a covenant renewal. Verse 16, Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and all the people and the king that they should be the Lord's people. Now they were already the Lord's people before. This is not new relationship language. And we've touched upon these things repeatedly. This is renewal language. This is recommitment language. Rededication language. It's a repledging of themselves to the covenant of grace God had already bound with them. And look at their immediate response to the covenant renewal. Verse 17 Then all the people went to the house of Baal and tore it down. His altars and images, they broke in pieces. They killed the priest of Baal. Baal was a false god. Uh, He was considered to be the god of the weather, the god of sun, storm, and rain, the god of life and fertility. And it appears that Athalia, under her reign, Uh, She had built, even in the city of Jerusalem, she had built this shrine, a house for Baal. And in response to their covenant renewal, this shrine, this sanctuary is torn down. And there's a challenge that comes to us, friends, whether our covenant renewal will provoke a similar response. When we rededicate ourselves to be the Lord's people, will it be a time of renewal in our lives? 
perhaps even a time of removal in our lives. Perhaps there's a person in your life who has a detrimental influence on your walk with Christ. Someone who doesn't help you to be a Christian. Someone who cools your affection for Jesus Christ. Someone who holds you back in full commitment to Christ. Covenant renewal says to you, is it not time to be cutting those ties of friendship, of intimacy? Have they not grown too powerful a grip to influence your affections like this? Or perhaps it's a certain group of friends that you have to pull back from. Work colleagues or friends from school, young people. And their language, their, their jokes, their sense of humor. It doesn't help you in the slightest with your walk with God. Covenant renewal says to you, is it not time to pull back? Maybe it's a TV series that you're watching. Or a book. Or a place that you frequent. And it's having a sinful, harmful effect on you. Maybe it's a habit that you've fallen into. A sinful habit. Secret drinking. Gambling. Pornography. Cheating. Gossiping. Covenant renewal says to you, Is it not time to draw a line in the sand? We all have idols, don't we? For some of us, it's our car. For others, it's our garden. For some, it's our phone. Or our farm. Or our Xbox. Things that dominate. Things that edge out Christ. Jesus said, Matthew 5, 29... If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. Covenant renewal, you see, is a time for for addressing and removing sinful influences. A time for removing sinful influences. And then thirdly, It's a time for refocusing on Christ. It's a time for refocusing on Christ. Where is Christ in 2 Chronicles 23? At first reading, it's perhaps difficult to see Christ here. And yet before long, you begin seeing him everywhere. I mean, one of the interesting aspects of this episode is that while we've named this covenant renewal in Joash's day, Joash really is a minor figure in the whole episode. We don't even hear him speak. At the start of the chapter, he's utterly unknown. He's hidden. He's hidden. He's out of sight before being crowned and and visibly set forth. But even in that, isn't he a little type of Christ? We remember for 30 years, not six, for 30 years, Jesus lived in utter obscurity. Until one day in front of great crowds, he came to be baptized and anointed by the Holy Spirit. And hidden obscurity gave way to to public ministry. Something of what's happening here with young Joash. Joash, in many ways, is something of a passenger here. Uh, Really, it's Jehoiada, the high priest, who's at the steering wheel. Jehoiada's the one with the plans. He's the one with the big ideas. He's the one moving all the bits of the jigsaw. It's his great concern, isn't it? His great passion to see a descendant of David on the throne. Uh, Jehoiada is so obsessed With the Davidic covenant. He's so obsessed with this promise that from the line of David a king will come. A king who will reign forever. And Jehoiada 
wants the nation really to, to be focusing on this son of David. This greatest son of David even. Jesus Christ. There's maybe a hint of that in the weapons that are used at the coronation service. Verse 9 of 23. Where we're told Jehoiada gave to the captains the spears and the shields that had been King David's. Which were in the house of God. The Australian RP minister Andrew Stewart says in his helpful commentary, perhaps these weapons were the only ones available, but they also helped to bring home to these men the significance of what they were about to do. They were using the weapons of David to restore the son of David to the throne of David. And it could be that Jehoiada is intentionally using this tangible connection to help the people refocus themselves on Jesus Christ. He did it all at great risk to his life, Jehoiada, bringing the king and the people together in this renewed covenant relationship with the Lord. You could even describe Jehoiada as something of a mediator here in this covenant renewal. Isn't he in many ways pointing us to Jesus, the better mediator of the better covenant? 1 Timothy 2, 5 tells us, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And he not only risked his life, he gave his life as a ransom for many. We're pointed over and over to Jesus. And certainly, having renewed covenant, we find Jehoiada reforming, reorganizing the worship. He gets the Levites, verse 18, to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. And there's this renewed focus on confessing sin and for sin to be covered over by the blood of a substitute. Again, another signpost pointing us again to Christ. Covenant renewal in Joash's day was truly a time for refocusing on Christ. And so it has been, friends, time and time again in the history of the church. God has been pleased to bless seasons of covenant renewal. To greatly help the church to refocus on Christ. In 1853, one of the occasions when our denomination renewed covenant in the past. It had such an effect. It had such an influence on the denomination. That our theological college started the very next year. 1854. And surely it's not over spiritualizing the events to see something of a connection between the two. Such was the renewed focus on Jesus Christ. Maybe that's what you need in these days. Maybe if you're honest with yourself, you've, you've lost focus a bit. Maybe you're focusing on something else. Maybe you're obsessed on something else other than Jesus Christ. What a thing it would be for us as a congregation, as a denomination, if through covenant renewal we were brought to focus once again with crystal clarity upon Jesus Christ. That a fresh love for him be born within us. You might remember 2015 and Northern Ireland politicians announced an agreement to break the political stalemate and return to Stormont. Do you remember what they called it? The Fresh Start Agreement. Aimed at securing stability and enabling progress. Uh, the ironic thing, of course, is it's been a bit of a false start. The good news of the gospel is that 
The God of heaven and earth is the God of fresh starts. He's the God of fresh starts. Maybe you're here this evening and you're not yet a Christian. And you think you've way too much baggage, way too much history, way too much that you have in your life to even begin as a Christian. Well, the Lord of heaven and earth can give and grant you a fresh start. A fresh start, an absolutely new beginning. And he can give all of us in his grace, particularly through these days of covenant renewal, a real and a lasting, a transforming fresh start. That he might give us a greater willingness to serve. That he might give us a greater interest in one another. A greater love for his worship. A greater desire to see the congregation grow. A greater eagerness to see souls saved. A greater joy in our salvation. After all, those are some of the things that happened in Joash's day, aren't they? Verse 21. So all the people of the land Rejoiced. Can we do the same this evening? As we reflect backwards on the covenant renewal meal this morning, surely we can do so with joy in our hearts. And as we look forwards and prepare for covenant renewal or service next week, we can do so with joyful anticipation. For at the heart of the covenant, this is our God, and we are his people. Amen.